year was 1223 in the hills of Italy in a little village named Gratio. And for the very first time, the nativity was shown. The crash, the French word, a cradle. And it was the inspiration of St. Francis of Assisi. Just a few years before he received the stigmata, the wounds of Christ, and then died and went home to God. But St. Francis had villagers take the part of Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the Magi, and they all marched with torches at midnight uh, where they had a mass, an outside mass, and Francis preached. But he knew that if people could see what the birth of Christ was like, uh, they would far better understand the miracle of Christmas. The miracle of Christmas is not so much that angels sang the Gloria or that uh, a virgin gave birth to a child or that the village carpenter became the guardian of the Savior of the world. The miracle of Christmas is not so much that shepherds and, and kings knelt together. The miracle of Christmas is that God has become one of us. God has become a child. God has become an infant. That the word of the Father Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, the eternal Word of the Father, always God, the Word of the Father, took upon himself human nature, and now in this little guy, there's one person who is fully human and fully divine at the same time. That's the miracle of Christmas, that the human race is now joined to God forever. And you know, Franciscan theology it's quite extraordinary. Franciscan theology says even if there had ever never been the fall, if no sin had entered the human race, if we were totally sinless, God the Father still would have sent his son. There still would have been Christmas. There still would be the incarnation. So that God and the human race would be joined together. And once you get that, once you get the incarnation to the Franciscan mind, salvation is assured. It's, it's inevitable. Because once we're united, then what would happen on Good Friday and Easter Sunday would automatically follow. That God would never abandon us. Isn't that great to know? That we are one with Him and that His Word has become our brother. That's the miracle of Christmas, the incarnation, folks, that God has become human. St. Augustine says, God loved the world so much that he sent his own son to share in our human nature so that we now can share in the very life of God. You, you get that? You get what that's saying? Not that we're going to become God, but that we're going to share in the very life of God. We're doing it right now. I baptized that little baby, right? That little baby is human and divine. Human and divine, just like Jesus. He shares in our human life and we share in his divinity. And we can never have that separate. That's absolutely extraordinary. So the human race is one. And each one of us Absolutely extraordinary. Francis of Assisi, I, I think it's fair to say, uh, he was called the greatest man of the last thousand years. 
And uh, it's fair to say that, that he transformed the church. That, that, that through that little man from Ephesus, a good little Italian, the church was saved. Uh, God spoke to him and said, Rebuild my church, Francis. Rebuild my church. And at first he thought it meant to go out and physically rebuild the, the churches that were falling down. He started with his hands doing that. But it really meant we, the church, rebuilding the people, rebuilding the faith. I'm just speaking for myself tonight. Something is going on. Do you get it? Does anybody else get it? Something is going on. Something extraordinary is going on with Pope Francis. I think something really big is going on. I really do. I just sense it. I just something is happening. Uh, that this man who took the name of Francis, uh, coming from the New World, from America, from South America, all of a sudden, people are attracted. They're attracted to him. They're attracted to goodness. They're attracted to simplicity. They're attracted... Well, we try to pass the faith on. You can read. We're going to give you a book tonight. And that, that helps. And then we try to preach like I'm trying to do that. I hope it helps. But we become a Christian... By meeting a Christian, we become a Christian by getting to know a Christian. That's how it happens. They, they tell the story of uh, Daniel Webster from, from New Hampshire. And when he was in Congress, they, uh, the Congress men were talking and said, I, you know, I've never met a Christian. Have you ever met a Christian? And they said, no, not a real one. And Webster said, I know a woman in the hills of New Hampshire. That's all it takes. If there's just somebody who is genuine, whose life has been transformed, and they're not just talking, but they're doing it, that they're living the gospel, that is like a magnet. That is like a magnet. I think something's going on. And I want to say to you, for the past, maybe 15 years, it has been difficult to be a Catholic. It has been, really, it, it, it has been a struggle. It, it has been to keep the faith. We have been through some hard times. And I want to commend you people. You have been faithful to the church in good times and in difficult times. And I want to just commend you for that. I just sense that something good is about to happen, is already happening, and that we are part of the history of salvation right now. And so what I want to say is, I, I hope I'm right. I just hope I'm right, that something great is happening. Uh, and that we can be proud to say, I'm a Catholic. And why? To really say, isn't that wonderful? This is a faith wonderful. And to say, I'm a Catholic priest, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? I'm a Catholic priest. Isn't that wonderful? Is it really? To say it. Uh, I just, something is happening. Something is happening. So what I want to say is, uh, he's leading by example, and he's going to lead us to take care of the poor and the sick and the abandoned and the handicapped. All of the, all of, all the people, uh, that, that's, that's where his direction is. Uh, and, and so we can challenge each other to follow him that way. To really focus Christ is present, especially in those people uh, who, who are, are, are most neglected. Most neglected. I just think our best days are ahead of us. I just sense it. Uh, so uh, the church was jammed at the 4 o'clock with the kids and everything. I told them, I said, the old people are coming to the 7 o'clock. I said, oh, yeah. So, uh, but what? It was just jammed with all these young families, all these kids. And it's just exciting to see the church 
still tonight. So St. Francis said, uh, preach the gospel every day and use words only if necessary. Get it? 